aspect to it. So how does the uh, brain change? Now the idea that all the brain activity is uh, electrical activity. Brain communicate by electrical pulses. Now this electrical current is not an electron, it's, it's ions. It's uh, the ion carrying electricity. It flows in your axons, your nerve fibers, by ionic flow. So it's slow. It's not as fast as the uh, electron flow in, in the cable, which is the light, uh, speed of light. In, in brain, the ions propagate with a speed of hundreds of meters per second. And it's still pretty fast. And these electrical currents that are associated with, with all the activity, uh, sensory, motor, cognitive activity, all this activity, will have an influence on the brain structure. And we, uh, by having this activity or experience, what we, we can uh, imagine, the experience is uh, the, the, uh, that associated with, uh, with the experiment, there's all this electrical activity. That activity can change the structure of the neurons and the synapse. And that we call plasticity. So after the experience, after the brain has been used, the brain is changing to a new state. And that state is different from the original, and that state contains the learning and memory. You, you have imprinted that experience, and it behaves differently in your cognitive behavior, in your uh, later function. So unlike other tissue, when we have an environmental change, our tissue will try to maintain its the same state, homeostasis. You don't want to change. When temperature changes, you have to maintain the temperature constant within your body. The brain tissue is, is special. Besides, they want to maintain homeostasis. They want the cell to be functioning well. It acquire a new property that is, uh, it, it can change to a different state. And that state makes the whole system work differently. And that plasticity is very special for brain tissue. And that, uh, that's what makes the brain special compared to others. And what's other special about brain is the a complicated network. The cell talks to each other in a very complicated fashion. And, and the other tissue doesn't do that. Right? So that's a second uh, important aspect to it. So to understand the brain function, we need to know how the activity changes the structure and how the activity, how the change in the structure affects the circuits, the networks that gives you the, the function, the, the, the motor sensory function as well as the cognition. Now, how does the activity change the cell and synapse? Synapse are the site of, uh, where information is transferred from one cell, one, one nerve cell to other, and that's where control of the information flow is. And a lot of changes is happening at a synapse. But in addition, it can happen at a neuron, there's the propagation of the, uh, the signal. That's in the neuron. So we can have two sites uh, that the signal transmission can be changed either neuron or, or the synapse. Now, the person, ever since we know about existence of synapse, people are thinking, well, this is where this information flow is. That's where the plasticity should be. We should change the synaptic plasticity is where the uh, origin of the plasticity. Well, that idea has been uh, very popular. In fact, it will be made even more popular by the guy uh, a Canadian psychologist by the name of Hap. Donald Hap uh, wrote a book in 1949, or 60 years ago. Uh, he summarized what the whole idea about how activity can change the brain. He finally he said, well, when we have an uh, experience, usually uh, we have a perception. The perception is often associated with events. Two different events happen at the same time. That type of coincidence of events may trigger a coincident firing of different neurons. And so he said, a correlated activity of two neurons, if they fire together at the same time, then their connection may be strengthened. If they are not fired together, uh, this is somebody else who later put it out uh, as, a, as a, uh, the opposite aspect of this learning rule, is that if they are not firing together, then their connection gets weakened. So you have a way of activity modifying the synapse simply by their correlation or uh, in, in their activity, firing pattern. Cells that wire together, uh, fire together, wire together. Very simple. 
And this idea has been very popular for 50 or 60 years ago. Uh, for 50 or 60 years after I have written or read this book. And in fact, activity does change the synaptic uh, connection, make it stronger. And the first person who demonstrated that the activity can change the synaptic strength, it happened to be a Chinese scientist by the name of Feng Depei. Uh, uh, I should just jump. Feng Depei is a scientist uh, who worked in Beijing uh, during the early days in before the war. In the Shehe Yi and the Sun Yi Xi, Department of Physiology, Union Medical, Union Medical College, uh, a college funded by Rockefeller Foundation. The Union Medical College is the first institution that gives that gives degrees, graduate degrees to to uh, for graduate studies, uh, uh, medical degrees, uh, medical uh, uh, PhDs. And Feng Depei was one of the faculty there during the war. Before the Pacific War broke, when Beipi was still under occupation of Japanese, but they still are allowed to operate, uh, to do uh, teaching and research and clinical things because U.S. and Japan hasn't hasn't broke their relationship. Uh, the Pearl Harbor hasn't uh, happened. The founder paid made a discovery that's very important: the first discovery of synaptic plasticity in any system. And he showed a neuromuscular junction uh, with control muscle. If you do a high frequency stimulation of the nerve that stimulates the uh, muscle, after that stimulation, the, uh, the, the amplitude of the, the synaptic transmission, uh, this is a plot here as the amplitude of transmission, amplitude of synaptic potential, which is efficacy, uh, representing the efficiency of transmission. It increases rapidly after high frequency stimulation. And it lasts for about 10 minutes and then decays. He called this high post tantalic facilitation. Uh, this discovery was groundbreaking. And in fact, uh, during the war, people in, in the, uh, Britain is already uh, heavily in the war. Hodgkin, Hospital, these people are all the people who discover action potentials. They are all drafted into, into the uh, uh, Navy uh, for, for Air Force for wartime research. And uh, according to the legend that they were looking for to receive by, by sea mail Chinese Journal of Neurophysiology. That's this, this journal uh, published in China, where they, they wait to see from the Pace paper. And this is a 30 or 26 articles in that journal that describe this uh, discovery of uh, this highly, uh, this, uh, this uh, potentiation. So what does this mean? It means that when you have an experience in a neuromuscular junction, something is kept, some memory is kept for minutes, up to 10 minutes. So that's a memory. Right? The, 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 the firing becomes more efficient. So that's a memory trace for activity. Right? 